Hi there. I'm doing this video because uh, I've recently been asked to do a presentation on uh, this particular topic, which is crop factor, at my local camera club. Now, the reason for doing it, I mean, although many people think that, well, crop factor is easy now, everybody's figured it out, that's not exactly true. A lot of people still have a lot of misconceptions about crop factor. So just as I uh, did some videos earlier where I called it demystifying uh, lens mounts, uh, right now I want to demystify crop factor. First of all, let's get the facts straight. Okay, I am reading from some notes, so don't mind if I look down often. Uh, many people have an innate fear of mathematics. Numbers scare them, <laughs> which makes it a little unusual when you come into the the uh, photography hobby because of course there are an awful lot of numbers to deal with. There are focal lengths, there are uh, the uh, shutter speeds, uh, apertures, and all of these have their own particular uh, nuances you might say, their own particular little meaning and they do take a little bit of time to get your head wrapped around them. So crop factor uh, it's just one more thing in a numerically centric uh, hobby. First of all, let's get uh, one thing out of the way. This video is not going to be about the pros and cons of different sizes sensors. That has nothing to do with this argument. Whether or not you prefer a small sensor camera or a full frame camera or even medium format for that matter has no bearing on what I'm going to talk about right now. Because what I'm going to talk about right now is the fact that Unless you are dealing with a very low cost point and shoot type camera that has uh, on it uh, written the equivalent focal lengths, which is very rare now these days. Unless you have one like that though, what you are looking at when you see the focal length of a lens is an absolute. I have two lenses right here. Both of these lenses are for micro four thirds. Yes, they're put together this way. This one right here is a 19 millimeter lens. Now, on my Micro Four Thirds camera, it is not going to behave like a 19 millimeter lens will on a full frame. But in actual fact, projected onto that sensor is exactly the same size, the exact same magnification image as you would find if this was a 19 millimeter on a full frame camera. Now, before anybody panics and says, no, 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 you got that all wrong, that lens won't work on a full frame camera. I know that. But it's not because of the focal length. It's because lenses have to project a round image out the back. That round image has to be larger than the sensor. The size of that projected image is not a function of the lens's focal length. It has to do with the way the lens is designed in order to uh, project that image. So a 19 millimeter lens like this designed for four thirds also works, although not with this mount, it also works on APS-C because you can buy a Sony mount for this. So it produces an image circle big enough for an APS-C camera. It does not produce an image circle big enough for a full frame camera. The result is that a 19 millimeter f2.8 lens for a full frame camera would be larger. All right, now that I have you totally confused, let's backtrack and explain what I just said. The focal length on the lens is sort of an absolute. If a lens says it's a 25 millimeter lens, then it is a 25 millimeter lens. The image that it projects will have the same magnification regardless of what camera it is mounted on. The result is that the term crop factor is quite correct because what happens is that if it has to project onto a full frame sensor and let's do some really really simple AV stuff here now this is going to really amaze and confound okay here let that represent a full frame sensor now the image projected onto this full frame sensor ends up right here. 
But what happens if we put in a smaller sensor? Well, let me show you in a very simple way. I'm going to draw a little picture. Okay, I'm going to draw a little picture of a house. It's not going to be very good. There is a house. And there is a door and windows. I know you can't see it yet, but you will. And there's another window. And there's our little stick man standing next to the house. And he's very proud of his new car that's parked right there in the driveway next to his house. And over on the other side, there's a tree. Okay. Yeah. I hope you can see this. There we have the image that is projected onto my full frame sensor. So, my friend comes up with his APS-C camera. Now his APS-C camera has the same lens as my full frame. So let's say this was shot with a 35 millimeter lens. So this is the sensor. This is the image it sees. So what does his sensor see? Exactly the same thing, but his sensor doesn't have this edge or this edge, or this top, or this bottom. So his sensor is only this big. Now, I hope you can see that. You now have a little man standing next to his house, and there is what appears like it may be a tree off in the side. But can you see what you could see before? No. And why not? Because the crop sensor, remember, same lens, the crop sensor was smaller. There was the full frame sensor. There was the APS-C sensor. Now you say, well, what about the uh, micro four thirds? Well, micro four thirds is a four thirds sensor. So it is, let's cut this down a little further. And with the same lens, we now have a picture of the front of the house. See that? That's all that's there. Just the front of the house now. Now, remember, same focal length. Did I change the magnification of that? No, because I drew it. I only drew it once. They are all the same size. But this is what it would look like. Let's say that was shot with a 19 millimeter. There's what the 19 millimeter this right here, would do on a micro four thirds. If I put the same focal length lens on a, an APS-C camera, I would get this picture. Notice there is no change in magnification. If I was to then put a same 19 millimeter lens, and all remember, everything else is equal. I'm still standing the same distance away from the front of the house. All things equal except the size of the sensor. So from the same distance, with the same focal length lens, this is what I get on full frame. So quick review, full frame, APS-C, like so, and micro four thirds, like so. Now there is another little complication in this. And that is the fact that the four-thirds sensor is not the same aspect ratio. It's not a 3-2, it's a 4 by 3. So that may not be a, a good representation. So I hope that this demonstration, as simple as it was, will give you a better idea of how it all works. It has nothing to do with the lens. Now, people will say, well, what about depth of field? What about this? What about that? All of these images would have exactly the same amount of depth of field. If they were shot at the same aperture with that same focal length lens, the depth of field would be equal. The only reason why people talk about smaller sensors having greater depth of field, in other words, less ability to uh, blur the background, is just because, in actual fact, if you wanted that last image, if you wanted that image right there, right there, if you wanted to get that on a full frame camera, then you would have to apply the crop factor. And what you would do is not shoot it with a 19 millimeter lens. You would shoot it with a 38 millimeter lens.
because of the two times crop factor that Micro Four Thirds has. A 38 millimeter lens has much shallower depth of field than a 19. Uh, imagine, for instance, a 100 millimeter lens, same depth of field in all. What's the difference? Well, on a full frame camera, you get a certain, a certain area. On an APS-C, notice I'm doing the same thing again. We walk back and we're using our, our uh, 100 millimeter now. On APS-C, that image. And on Micro Four Thirds, APS-C will give you a 150 millimeter equivalent, or 160 if you have a Canon. And Micro Four Thirds would give you this. With your two times crop factor, it will act like a 200 millimeter. But will it have the depth of the shallowness of a 200 millimeter lens, an actual 200 millimeter? No. Because it's still a 100 millimeter lens, it still obeys all of the laws of physics of a 100 millimeter lens. All we've done is crop it. All right, folks. I don't know if this made much sense. I don't know if it got through the idea. But it's a starting point, and it's a little practice for me just to see if this is going to work when I actually do it for my photo club. And at that time, I'll use better visuals. But I think you guys will get a kick out of this, so I'm going to leave it with this. Anyhow, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. If you want to see more of my videos, then subscribe. And of course, if you think anybody is going to get something about this rather uh, ad hoc version of how uh, Crop Factor works, then share it. Well, bye for now.